Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Today we're going to be painting Bird Tree and I'm going to be sipping a little Chardonnay. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so the materials we're using today is a 16 by 20 stretched and primed canvas. You can get it at any of your local craft stores and you can certainly switch up the size, but I'm going to be using the 16 by 20. Uh, you're going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes. You'll need a paper towel for drying your brushes. The three brushes that I'm using today is a one inch wide bristle brush. I'm using a number six round synthetic brush and a number one round synthetic brush. And we're gonna be using acrylic paints. The colors I'm using today are titanium white, um, burnt umber, burnt sienna, Mars black, and ultramarine blue. And of course you can switch up those colors as well, but those are the exact colors that I'm using. And that's all you're gonna need for today. All right, so the first step that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be painting the entire canvas. We're gonna be using the one inch wide bristle brush and the three colors that I'm gonna be using are white, burnt umber and burnt sienna. Um, what I'm gonna to attempt to do is get it a little bit darker around the edges and lighter as it goes in towards the center. I'm only gonna do half of my canvas um, and then I will flip my canvas over and do the same thing for the second half. So you'll see how this goes. I'm going to start with all three colors on my brush at the same time. I like to paint the edges or the sides of my canvas, so I'm going to start with just kind of hitting that top edge and that also gives me kind of a preliminary look at what color I'm starting with here. And then I'm re um, put, I'm putting more paint, reloading my brush with those same three colors. And as I go through here, um, I am going to start to just pick up white, which is going to lighten my color in through that center. And I don't even have to wash my brush. If I just continue to um, pick up the white, it will get lighter and lighter as I go. And I'm just using a left to right uh, brush stroke. I do want my sides to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to put a little bit more of the burnt sienna and the burnt umber over on the sides and you can see I'm just kind of pulling it in that center area. I'm going to do that on the right side as well. This way it's going to give me a nice light kind of focal point in the middle of the canvas and now I'm just kind of picking up some more white to get this to go a little bit lighter as I go in towards the center of the canvas. And you can see I'm still just kind of using that left to right brush stroke and this is going to get it to blend nicely um, with each other and right now again I'm still just picking up white at this point um, so I can get this to go lighter as I go in towards that center and as soon as I get this top half done um, like I said earlier what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flip my canvas upside down and do the same process on the other half of the canvas and the reason why I'm going to do this is just because it, to me, it's easier because I'm doing the same exact step two times in a row as opposed to trying to reverse it as I go down my canvas. Um, so for me, this is just my, my easier kind of method here. And I'm kind of digging this, so I'm going to, at this point, flip my canvas over like that. I'm not super tall, so I had to get on my tippy toes for that. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm not washing my brush. I'm just starting with the um, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and the white. And I'm doing the top edge of my canvas here. And this step takes you a little while just because you are doing the entire canvas. Um, so it will take you a few minutes. And you might find that you wanna do a second coat on it just to get it a, a little bit fuller of a look. Um, but I'm just gonna stick with the one coat for demonstration purposes. Um, and again, I'm kind of going down those sides and bringing a little bit of that darker shade in through the edges. And if you're, 
the top and the bottom of your canvas don't match exactly, that's okay because you're going to be using one of these in essence as the sky and the other one as the ground. So if one of them ends up a little bit darker than the other, so be it. That will totally work visually um, because you've, it's gonna be two different parts of the canvas and two different um, pieces of the, of the landscape in essence. Um, so again, if, the, if this doesn't match exactly with the, with the other half, that's quite all right. But you're gonna just kind of keep going here until you have the entire canvas covered and you want these colors to, in essence, meet in the middle um, once, you've, once you've gotten these sides down and you get it nice and smooth. You, you can probably see every now and again I'm, I'm giving it a nice full brush stroke um, from left to right. That's just kind of ensuring that I have a, a nice smooth transition from one color to the next. And again, I'm just kind of going left to right through this whole process. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go back up here. And there's those nice long full strokes. And now I'm going to get it all to really blend and make sense here in the middle. And sometimes the quicker you go, you can see that my brush kind of moves quickly um, at times because my, um, my paint is still wet and when, I, when I'm moving it, at such a rapid pace, I can keep that paint continually moving um, and, it, and it provides a nice blend for me as I'm going. So I'm just about finished uh, this step and for the next step we are going to be using that number six round brush. So when you feel like you've got a nice, nice blend going on here, um, you can put this big brush away in your water cup and you can take out the number six for your next step, but you do have a decision to make before we go on to the next step. And the decision is, which do you want to be the top and the bottom? So while you're preparing for the next step, you decide if you wanna flip this back the other way or if you wanna keep it this way for the top and the bottom. And then you just get your number six brush out and ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be using the number six brush. You're gonna be using black paint only, and we're doing the first layer of the tree trunk and the branches. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'll put black paint on my brush. I've gotta decide where I want this tree trunk to be. And for me, I'm gonna be putting it in the lower half left of my canvas. So I'm gonna be putting, if let's say this was my halfway mark, that's gonna be about the top of my um, trunk, and then I'm gonna bring it down maybe three or four inches, and that'll be the bottom of my trunk. So this is meant to kind of look like, you know, some kind of maybe a maple tree. So I know that it's gotta get a little bit wider as it gets down towards that base. So you can see I'm making it a little bit wider as I go down towards the base. Um, and as it's towards the top, I do want it to be a little bit thinner. You can add little little bumps coming out if you wanted to, those little like knob, knob kind of branches. Um, and you can also add some little roots coming out of the bottom. The roots in the bottom will be kind of disguised by um, a shadow that we're gonna be putting later. And I just really am using the, the tip of my brush just to kind of get this to almost splay out from left to right. Um, I don't do anything super tricky with it, um, but what I'm going to do as I get up to thinking about doing my branches, I don't need to put much branches on the left hand side of the tree because I'm going to be having all the leaves there. So um, I'm only going to put a few over here and my, the focus of my branches is going to be on the right side. Um, whenever I'm doing branches for a tree, I always know that you need to have some thicker ones to make it look more natural because those are the, the predominant older ones that are um, kind of growing out of the tree. And as you get towards the tips of the branches, that's when you wanna have some thinner ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some heavy, thicker branches to start. And I'm gonna do a couple on this side. And what I really am doing is I'm pushing my brush pretty hard in order to get these, these thicker ones. I'm gonna do a couple thicker ones over here um, and then I'm gonna 
do some um, thicker ones going over into the right hand side. And again, I'm using a good amount of paint. I'm pushing my brush pretty hard. Um, I'm keeping in mind where I want the profile of this tree to be. So for me, I'm going to have my tree kind of going up in a triangle type um, formation. So I know that I want a couple of pretty sturdy branches um, to, to really ground it and make it firm here. Um, so after I get a, a good amount of the thicker branches, I feel like this is a pretty, pretty good amount in through here. So I'm going to start building my smaller branches. Um, and a trick to doing the smaller branches is you can take your brush and spin it in your paint on the side of your palette. That will make it nice, your brush nice and pointy. Or you could thin out your paint a little bit. That'll make it like an ink consistency. So I'm going to give you a, col a closer look on these smaller branches and you'll see they're, they're primarily the same type of um, brush stroke. I don't hold my brush really tight. I like my brush to kind of dictate itself where that wiggle is going to go. And I don't press hard and I almost let off the pressure as I am going towards the end of those branches. And typically the less I think about it, the better off they, they come out because I'm not really thinking about what, what angle they need, need to go out. I'm just really more or less thinking about filling my space with um, little lines from here or there. They can twist and turn. They can have little tiny pieces coming off of the edges. Um, and you'll find your rhythm with whatever brush you've selected to use. Um, but you can see I am also kind of forming the exterior shape of, um, of this tree as I'm going. And branches can come in all different directions. You can have some hanging down. You can have some almost look like they're broken. But what you do want to do is make sure that you have a, a good amount of branches here to make this tree pretty darn full. Um, so that way when we go to do the birds later, um, you're not struggling with filling that tree in um, because you've already got a good amount of branches to help you with, with that process. Um, and then I'm gonna put a few more in here. I think I want a couple of these to kind of go out a little bit farther here. And you can see I changed the direction of my brush as I'm doing these. And they don't all have to be solid, solid lines. You can certainly almost make them like wispy at the ends. Um, the thinner you can get them to be at those, the tips, the more natural it's going to look. Um, and then once you feel like you've got a good amount here, I'm going to do a couple more up at the top. I feel like my tree might be a little, a little sparse in through here. So I'm just adding a few more. And you can see at this point, I'm not even really concentrating at all where these branches are going. I just really want to um, fill in the space. And then once I've got enough over here on the right side, I am going, going to switch brushes back to my, um, my bristle brush. So you can put this number six brush away in your water cup and take wash and dry the bristle brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so for the next step, what we're doing is we're going to be putting the leaves on the tree. On the left hand side, I'm going to be using my one inch flat bristle brush. The colors I'm going to be using are mostly blue, but I'll also use a little bit of black and a little bit of white. Um, the goal here is you want this tree on the left hand side to emulate the shape of what you have on the right hand side. So the way that I start this, is I'm going to put blue on my brush and I'm going to in essence make a messy outline on the left hand side that's going to kind of emulate the shape on the right hand side. So I can start up at the top and what I'm doing is I'm kind of wiggling my brush along this exterior border and all the while I'm kind of looking at this right hand side to dictate what kind of shape I'm doing here. And it doesn't have to be a perfect mirror image, but you want it to look like this side of the tree belongs to that side of the tree and that 
this side of the tree is in essence what that would look like without leaves. So you want to have that kind of balance with it. And then once you have that, that shape, you need to start filling it in. So what I do is I'm gonna be using blue paint to start and I don't fill it all the way in. You can kind of just like wiggle your brush and maybe dot it or dab it going along. But you can see I've got some light spots and some dark spots. Watch out for wet black in the middle. Um, you can certainly put some blue in there because you want it to be at least halfway um, throughout the painting because the right side will be filled with flowers. I mean, uh, flowers, birds. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be getting this blue on here. Once I feel like I have a good amount of just the blue, then I have to put um, a highlight at the top and a shadow at the bottom, um, in essence. This can be um, done dramatically or it can be really subtle. So what I'm gonna do, I still have blue on my brush. I'm not gonna wash my brush at this point. I just added a little bit of white and I'm just, ever so kind of gently adding a little bit of white at the top of this to give it a little bit of highlight and you again you can make this really dramatic um, or you can have it kind of subtle if you want and now as I'm going towards that middle of the tree I'm picking up more blue so this what this is going to do is it'll transition me from the light to the dark down at the bottom and I'm just kind of dotting this as I go along Again, you could wiggle it, you could dot it, whatever you know is a comfortable kind of application for you works for me. And then as I get down towards this bottom area, this is where I'm gonna start to introduce a little bit of black to the tree. If you still have a ton of white on your brush, I would recommend um, that you wash it and dry it at this point. But if, you, if you've transitioned and you've got prim primarily blue on your brush, then you're fine to just dot your um, dab your brush into the black paint and start putting a little bit of black at the bottom. The black can very easily take over, so know that you just kind of want to use it in a, in a cautious kind of manner. Um, if you feel like you've gone too heavy, you could in essence just let it dry for a little while and then add some blue and or white on top of it. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. So at this point, what I'm gonna do, I, as you can see, I'm just kind of fiddling with it at this point, um, but I am going to be moving on to the next step. Um, I am gonna use this same brush, but I do wanna wash it and dry it. So you can wash and dry the big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, um, we're going to be doing the shadow underneath the tree. I'm going to use my bristle brush for it. I'm going to be using mostly brown, but I will probably use a little bit of black as well just to make sure this blends nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put brown on my brush. For safety purposes, I start in my tree and I just put a little bit of brown in through there. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to wiggle my brush left to right and I am doing it almost as a dry brush kind of technique. You can, you can put some of that brown up that tree if you want to. Um, but I want this to look pretty natural. So I don't want it to be like having too, too much paint on it. So for me, I'm just gonna kind of rub this in a little bit. Um, you might end up looking like you have a hill as opposed to just a shadow underneath it, which is totally fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Who's to need to know it was supposed to be a shadow and not a hill. Um, I just put a touch of black on my brush just so I can get this a little bit darker without it being um, too prominent. And then that's all I'm going to do for the shadow. I don't really overwork it. I just want it to look like maybe the sun is up high and you've got like a nice big fluffy shadow underneath. Um, and then we're going to be switching brushes to the um, number six brush after this so you can put the uh, bristle brush in your water cup and take out your number six brush and get ready for the next step. All right so for the this step what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finishing the tree trunk with bark like texture or colors. I'm going to be using my number six brush. I'm going to be using burnt sienna, burnt umber, and white and if anything goes wrong 
I go back into my black. So that's my plan B. Um, so I'm gonna give us a little bit closer look on this so we can, um, so you can see it in a, in a more detailed manner. I just put some burnt sienna on my brush and really what I'm doing is I just want to add some accents of these colors. I don't really need to go crazy with them. This is just meant to be like a little highlight, um, make it look a little bit more like a tree, a three-dimensional tree. Um, I am touching my brush in black because I want to make this little thing a little pointier. So you can certainly um, modify anything at this point. There's a little weird white spot in through there. Um, and I'm going to put a touch of white on my brush now just to give it a little bit more highlights. And you can see I'm, I'm really just kind of wiggling my brush. The more I think about it, the less natural it's going to look. So this way, if I just kind of wiggle it up and down, a little side to side, it adds this um, natural look to it with some light spots and some dark spots. So then when you feel like you're all set, um, we are going to be doing the next step with our smallest brush. So when you're all set with this, you've got some life in that trunk. What you can do is you'll put the uh, number six brush away in your water cup and you're gonna take out your number one round brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so this in essence is the last big step of the painting. We're gonna be tackling the birds. Um, I'm gonna be using my number one round brush. I will be using black, blue, and white. And the reason why I'm using those three colors is because this is meant to look like an illusion, like the, the birds flying away were in essence looked like this at one point. So I'm gonna be using the similar colors to over here. So when I'm doing the top birds, I'll be using more blue and white. When I'm doing those center birds, I'll be using more blue. And then when I'm doing my bottom birds, I'll be using more black. Um, you can certainly change that up a little bit, but that's the, the thought process throughout it. Um, I do definitely want to put some birds within the tree also, just like sitting or getting ready to fly or whatever. Um, so I'm going to start with blue. Um, I am going to give you a closer look on some of these birds just so you can get the idea of um, how easy they can be without being um, a little scared of them. So. I have blue on my brush right now, and for this bird, it's gonna be super complicated, so make sure you're paying a lot of attention to this. So, there it is. There's my bird. <laughs> so, when you, when you zoom out on this, which you, we're not gonna do yet, but you can really just make Vs, you can make, um, you know, different, they don't even have to be anything of complication. I can do that bird like I learned in first grade that's just kind of like, you know, almost an M kind of thing. Um, I am going to start to switch colors. I'm going to have another one sitting in the tree there. I'm going to use a little bit of black. I'm going to get a couple of birds sitting in the tree right here. And again, they're just, these little ones are just um, vertical lines. I'm going to have one flying out over there one, you know, maybe getting ready to launch there. And I would just kind of keep keep on with these. These can look like V's. They can look like, um, you know, little check marks. They can be, look like airplanes. So if I do something like that, it'll look like an airplane. Um, and as I'm starting to, to move away or out of the tree. I do want to make sure that that tree is nice and full um, and looks like I have enough birds in there. So I'm just going to kind of keep adding little marks as I go. Right now I've got blue and black on my brush. Um, I'm going to, I just dip my brush into white so I can have, you know, a couple up and through here, but that was too, too light. So I'm going to redo that one. Um, this kind of looks like just a line with a, a wing coming down from it. You can have them 
flying in different directions. You know, they can be rogue and just flying off and in a different direction. But I do want my birds primarily to be sitting in the tree and then fly out like they're spraying out and up. Um, so I just again am making sure I have enough substance within this tree before I start moving out. Um, and again, a trick to getting your brush to, to do what you want it to is definitely you can um, either thin out your paint or you can, um, you know, you turn your brush within your, um, your palette that will get you to um, have a nice pointy brush. And as you can see, I am just continuing to make myself little different. This is a line with a diagonal mark next to it. Um, you can make them look like they're flying. You can, you know, actual birds flying with a little head and some wings, or you can just make various marks. So it could just be a, a line in a certain direction with um, another line next to it. You're going to have X's and that's going to make it look like little airplanes. Um, if you do them really tiny, they're going to look like they're far off in the distance. Um, you can have little clusters of them going in different directions. Um, at some point I'm kind of converging these colors together like I just added blue to my brush as I'm going up into my sky. Um, but I am continually switching um, what type of bird I'm doing and that just makes it look like it's at a, coming from a different angle. Um, you can always use um, the, the picture that I provide for you on the video. That's a great reference. So you can print that out and refer to that whenever you need to. Well, that's gonna be a nice big one. Um, so now I'm just kind of like skipping around um, just so I can get myself a nice cluster or um, kind of like a direction of where I want my birds to go. Oh, this is gonna be a big one. So this one's gonna look like it's a really close to us. That's all right. And I'm gonna have him have some cute little birds next to it. He's gonna be my focal point. You can have little X's. Um, I like to have mine in these, these varying clusters. And you can see not all of my birds are perfect. They come in all different shapes and sizes and they're gonna go in, in different directions and they're gonna have um, different, a different feel to them. Um, so just know that all of your birds can, can be varying shapes and sizes and colors and they can look close to you, they can look far away from you. Um, so know that it's all right if they don't all come out perfect. Um, this is simply, um, you know, a nice fun tree that has lots of different um, characteristics to it. So just know that yours, you know, you might want to even introduce a new color. Maybe you want some red in yours or some green in yours. Um, so just know that this can really be whatever you imagine it to be. It could be a flock of cardinals coming, coming out. Um, it could be, you know, canaries. You could have a whole bunch of little tiny yellow birds or, or you know, I don't know, some parrots. This could be a, uh, you know, from the tropics. Maybe you make this into a palm tree and you've got a whole bunch of parrots coming out of it. Uh, so you can, you can really have fun with it and, and make, it, make it into something that you, you know, are proud of and, and that you want to hang on your wall and, you know, feel free to make some really nice light birds like I'm doing right now. I've got a whole bunch of white on my brush that I'm, that I'm using. So now I've got some light blue uh, birds coming into play and as you can see this this step does you know might take you a little while just because it is there's you know you could have a thousand birds in here um, but you do want to make sure that you have it nice and filled in and you can have you know just little marks here and there 
again, I'm doing check marks and I want to have maybe a little rogue one going here. When I do the check marks, maybe one, of, one side is a little bit longer than the other. Um, if you feel at any time that all of your birds are starting to look the same, um, one of the tips that I often give my students is to turn your canvas. Um, if, if you turn your canvas, you will automatically start making birds in different directions, in different colors. Um, it takes you away from that systematic approach um, that you might find yourself in. So like right now, I feel like a lot of these are pretty similar in size. So I have to consciously make, you know, an effort to make some really tiny birds. Um, that way I do maintain some, a good diversity for these. Um, and if you feel like you um, want to, like I said, introduce different colors, like maybe I want a couple of blue ones down here, even though I don't have a, a ton of blue down at the bottom of the tree, maybe I, you know, I want to intermingle this. So that's where you can um, definitely get more creative. Um, I'm gonna have a couple more up and through here. And I almost feel like I've got a pretty good variety going on here. I think I wanna throw a few more up here. And again, you can have some, some big ones and some small ones. Um, as it's getting far away, maybe you do some, some tinier ones, um, but you can definitely do them in all different kinds of shapes and, and directions, um, making them look like they've, you know, they're sprouting their wings. This is totally not my favorite one over here, but you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> um, you, you're bound to have one or two that you're like, ooh, I don't like that one. And you, I guess you could certainly paint over it, um, but it's much more difficult to paint over it um, than to just accept it for what it is um, and just move on and, and make some more. I think I'm, I'm almost, maybe just a couple more up and through here. Again, I do want this to be nice and full and have it really gives the illusion that um, this at one point was these birds over here. Um, so I do, you know, need to have a good amount to compensate for what this looks like over here. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll put white on this one's wings to get it to be a little bit less subtle. There we go. So therefore I'll put white on this one to make that one to be a little bit less subtle. And then um, once you feel like you've got enough birds in through here, we are going to tackle that one tiny little step that is a final step of every painting, um, which is gonna be done with the small brush. So it's really hard to stop doing these birds. I feel like I just wanna keep going, but. Um, at this point, I'm going to call it and say that I've got enough birds on here, so I am going to wash and dry my small brush and get ready for the final step. All right, so the last step to every painting is signing it. So I'm going to use my small brush. For this particular painting, I'm going to be signing it with black. You can do it in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to do mine in the bottom right. And you can do your initials, you can do the date, you can put your whole name, whatever your identifying mark is, feel free to do that. And then that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting with you again sometime.